The high mobility powered exoskeleton enables stable walking over irregular terrain. Ah, technology. Isn't it a fascinating thing? Especially so much when it's put against the military aspect of things. And, you know, my channel has discussed many different technology factors for military usage in the past. You know, whether it be robots or drones or that sort of stuff. But we've never really heavily focused on the personal soldier equipment that has been, you know, transformed into the future. And sometimes some things get pushed a little out of the boundaries of sane um you know i know there's a lot of technology out there and sometimes you look at it and you think well that's that would be interesting in the next 20 years and what we're about to look at today is something that i think is probably going to be there now this video is pretty old as you can see by the you know the project management uh, development timeline here from 2015 and they said it was actually going to be in delivery of 2017 with this product uh it's a little far-fetched now, what we're going to be looking at is basically a system that allows the soldier, or any kind of military member, I guess, to utilize a somewhat superstructure that fits across the legs and the back and the waist of a soldier as they move along in whatever configuration or setup that they are in the military. The infantry soldier is primarily what this is focused for. However, in my eyes, I think this would be more suited for... Well, actually, I don't know, because I think this system is a little bit too much of the extreme... I know this technology is going to be advanced, I know this is primitive, I know it is working hard around the world to be put into a realistic setting, but I couldn't help but laugh at this one, uh, mainly for the fact of the way this dude runs. He literally looks like Combat Robocop, it's absolutely amazing. You'll see throughout this footage of the guy just like walking like an absolute unit, I mean he looks like a unit with this thing on. Some of the things that kind of concern me with these kind of things is it tells us that it can put 30 kilograms on the body and will remove 10 kilograms of that weight. Now, think about this, folks. You put 30 kilograms on and the unit will save you 10 kilograms of weight. So you'll feel like you're only carrying 20 kilograms when you're carrying 30. But the unit itself probably weighs close to 10 kilograms. May I also remind you that this system uses batteries and inherently batteries are bloody heavy. So... I'm not too sure whether or not it's defeating the purpose of actually having this unit. Not only that, but ergonomically, look at the way this dude is walking and running. That does not look natural. It looks horrible. And every time I look at it, I just want to laugh. Now, I admit, there is a lot of application that this can be used for. I think, personally, as a gunner, this would be more refined for someone who can lift heavy artillery shells, like the 155mm uh, howitzer shells that we're using right now, the projectiles. They should be what this should be used for. And there is technology out there that they focused on this. And I have talked a little bit about it in the past. But this kind of setup seems like it's got a long, 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 long way to go. It's fragile. Look at the cables coming off this thing. This guy's trudging through the wood line. Apparently, you can strap people to the back of it as well, by the way, folks. It's uh, this guy just kind of walking through the woods. He picked up a civilian and flew him on his back. But it's very fragile. I mean, there's a lot of cables coming off it. Um, a lot of straps. A lot of sort of connectors. Um, all this stuff can get caught in trees, branches. I mean, look at these guys. They're climbing all over rubble. It's just not practical. It seems like it would just get damaged very, very quickly. Now, again, it looks like he's having more difficulty getting up in this thing than anything else. That's just my opinion. He has no extra gear on. You put your extra gear on with this thing and your rifle, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. Now, once again, he's easily trudging through the wood line here. No problems. There's no rain. There's no snow. There's no mud. There's no influence from heat, cold. The system is in perfect condition right now. Now, it says it's dustproof and waterproof, easy to take on and off, but I just don't see that being the case. I mean, these straps that are wrapped around you, these are chafing points. These are all points. Look at that. It's going right around your thighs. That eventually, after a however many kilometer patrol, is going to be a nightmare for your skin. And just strapping normal tack vests on and webbing after a long time, it hurts. It gets heavy. And, and this would be the same thing. Those pressures against your thighs, against your calf muscles, against your shins. If you've ever experienced shin splints, um, I haven't, but I know a lot of people have. This kind of system is almost, yes, it's increasing your potential to uh, reduce resistance to equipment that you're using, but also somewhat additionally adding it. You're carrying more stuff. 
you're literally carrying, although it's working for you, you're still carrying, it's still on your body in some form or nature. So you're still having to harness that weight of the system. Put on top of that, the ability to you move quickly and the agility of the system, I just don't see it. Uh, I see it being more of a hindrance and just a pain in the butt. You talk to any infantry soldier and say, hey man, you want to put this on and uh, go into a section attack for the next two hours? Uh, no. No, thank you, I will not. I would much prefer having some lightweight pants, uh, some extra magazines, some extra frags, some extra smoke, uh, and I'll take up the weight that way. If he's going on a 20km patrol with a huge rucksack, this may be something tangible, but then what do you do with it once you're done? What do you do once you've done your hike? If you're about to go into a section attack, you pack this thing up and then someone else has to carry it, you, you put it somewhere, then you got to charge it. Like, I, I feel like we're nowhere near in in the place where we can use this just yet. I want it to be. I really, really want it to be. I want to see these guys carrying civilians through the wood line all day long. I want to see them, you know, jumping up and down wood lines and, and crawling through trees and all sorts of stuff. But I just don't think we're there. I want it to be so, so bad. I can't imagine... Um, a future military where this is not going to be a thing, you know? But just look at the way it's all rickety, it's bouncing all over the place, it's going to be hitting off the side of you. I can't stand just a strap slapping off the side of me from my, you know, my respirator pouch, let alone, you know, that thing bouncing off my hip, or, or the, you know, the trunnions hitting off the side of my kneecaps, or the constant pressure on my shins against those straps and the chafing from the clips and etc, etc. It would just drive me absolutely nuts. I do very much so advocate for the future of this coming into the spotlight for the military and i also have a huge respect for defense contractors and people looking into developing this kind of technology because it's a big deal and i really do feel that allowing soldiers to do their job more ergonomically sound and without less resistance or sorry with less resistance on their bodies is an integral part of soldiering we need to be able to reduce the amount of weight the soldiers carrying make life easier for the soldiers so not only can they you know, complete the battle and, and fight longer and harder, but also when they retire and when they leave their career, they're not left with bad knees, bad shins, bad joints, bad hips, bad backs, right? This is all heavy stuff that we're carrying around. You put these troops, you know, you put a, an infantryman in a 22 year long career, he's done his full term of service, I can guarantee you at some point during that time he's either gathered some sort of injury, some sort of strain, sprain, something that has caused him or her to have a really hard time. Uh, and that sometimes follows you when you get older. I'm experiencing definitely myself with my knees, uh, my IT band. This kind of system may help that, but I don't think in the configuration that we're looking at with this kind of sort of almost uh, framework kind of style is the way to go. I think this kind of technology can be very much utilized in sort of a stretchy bands in a way almost like it wraps around um your 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 skin almost like uh you know a nanotechnology i know we're way 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 away from that but for this to really be effective and for it to work i think nanotechnology or, or you know mechanics that can be bound into material is the way to go because then you're not having additional infrastructure and framework wrapped around your body it's just integral to your own skin I'm not saying it's implanted, but that wraps around and can kind of con contort to what you want it to do and, and wrap with the skin and wrap with the muscles to assist the muscles in what they need to do. I would love it if I could have two pieces of, you know, a stretchy fabric material that had sort of mechanical nano fabric in there that I could attach to either of my IT bands. I'd be running up in hills all day with no problems, but my knees do eventually struggle. But having those big, you know, unions and trunnions and, and gyros on there, they, they just feel like to me they would just be bouncing off my skin. I'd be getting really, really fed up with them. Now, maybe they're not really designed for running around. I, I would much rather see this sort of technology for lifting heavy logistics equipment, engineers for bridge layers, all that sort of stuff. That makes sense. That I can see being feasible right now. You know, if you're building a Bailey bridge or whatever else the engineers build with their crazy bridge shenanigans, they can pick up a gigantic piece of steel, you know, even an infrastructure to their arms and, and the framework to their arms, lift it up and put it all over the place. The artillery, myself, is a gunner. Although I'm not using the 155mm, I can still utilize it for lifting up, you know, boxes of ammunition. I don't know, whatever else. Big, heavy stuff. That's what these things need to be used for. I want to see more of that, I think, coming into the world of sort of defense contracts and military 
um, application because that just makes more sense than anything else. But I'd love to hear what you think about this. Do you think this technology is relevant? Do you think it's something that we're going to see a lot more of in the future? I really do want to see it. I want to know what you think. Do you, do you feel that it's feasible? Do you want it? Would it be something that you would wear or something that we'd use? Do you agree with me on the nanotech side of things? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's short but sweet little uh, application video to robotics and the ergonomic structure of how we can help soldiers on the ground. Um, if you did enjoy it, please leave me a like. And again, as I said, make sure you leave a comment. And if you want to support my channel, feel free to go check out my Patreon page. Uh, the links are all in the description box below, and I hope to see you next time. If you do want to be notified of any upcoming videos, click the little bell button by the subscribe button. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye.